like if you want to root for for peace for justice but if you cannot defend it then that's empty that's just a, a wishful thinking but if you have the strength to back it up the moral strength the spiritual the the mind strength and the physical capability of defending it you are really a pacifist because you can be you know bad person but you decide to go for like the good way justice and peace yeah. and keep things good I, i think that has a lot of value a lot of people that yeah, that turn to martial arts specifically to aikido they they want to follow and defend this this idea of peace but they they cannot physically defend it you just you just have that that you know preset idea that oh you know if there's conflict like you know i'm gonna avoid it well sometimes you can't sometimes you gotta stand your ground and defend yourself or defend some other people so if you don't have the the capability of you know technically and physically of, of doing that then that's not much of a you know peaceful warrior so to speak hello everyone so today is a day for another special podcast i guess i tend to call most of my podcast special because I honestly feel most of them are special, but today is a special one nevertheless. And uh, the guest is someone you may know, that is Francisco de los Cobos, who I consider to be my friend. And interestingly enough, uh, a few years ago now, when I initially did the Aikido versus MMA video and got my ass whooped by an MMA practitioner when I was still a pure on Aikidoka, an Aikido instructor too, Uh, there were a number of people who reached out to me and said, you know what, I went for a similar path or I know how you feel and uh, there are some, I believe, valuable insights that I can offer to you. And I was very happy to accept most of the offers. And one of the early ones was from Francisco de los Cabos. Uh, I actually just, I think he sent me a video where he talks about how he feels about Aikido and I liked it a lot. And probably I reached out to him and I said, you know what, maybe we can talk on record. And that video is recorded, it's in the history of YouTube uh, on my main Martial Arts Journey channel. And uh, I uh, was, I'm kind of uh, excited that it's been a few years and it's been a while since me and Francisco connected directly online uh, through you know face-to-face -face conversation and had something on record. So it almost feels like it's a full circle that happened because in the beginning at that stage, Francisco's opinion and, and friendship was very, valuable to me i really benefited from what he had to say and now that i you know went through this journey i am very happy to connect up with him again and to talk over things from a different perspective now with all the accumulated experience and looking back at what happened then but also looking into the future and talking about valuable questions especially because francisco he's a badass let's start with that he's been training martial arts since i think he's like since he was like five And he devoted many years to Aikido, but also a lot of other martial arts. Uh, Olympic based Taekwondo, I think, and then you know, MMA, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and uh, kickboxing. I, I don't want to say the wrong names. Basically, he's a badass, he's a fighter, but who considers himself that, as you will see in this video, in this talk, that Aikido is a big part of his identity. And so I was thrilled to talk to him. So, so what is Aikido to him? So why does he uh, still respect and love Aikido so much as a badass fighter? Uh, what does the Aikido philosophy mean for him? And, and we also spoke about the crisis that I consider Aikido is in and maybe how the situation can be improved. So many things relating to my desire to, and my interest, uh, renewed interest in the Aikido philosophy, which if you don't know, I've been surprised myself to discover that Uh, I started to see some value in it again, and I'm interested to come back and look at it again at the particular particular Aikido philosophy, although we spoke, speak also about the technical aspects of it in this video. But yeah, and Francisco, to talk with Francisco about that, to reflect about it, and to see, to talk about Aikido from a positive perspective was a great experience, and I hope you will benefit uh, from this podcast in addition to the Rediscovering Aikido series. So without further blabbering about, I wish you to enjoy the video right now. So I was about to head home after filming this intro, but I realized I spoke a lot about Francisco, but I didn't give enough information about why this video has happened. And I'll just, for a very brief moment, sum up quickly, recap on the intention behind this video, and which I feel is important. So I mentioned that uh, 
to my own surprise, I rediscovered an interest in the Aikido philosophy. And now I feel I am in a stage of my life where, you know, when you go, when you go for a breakthrough, breakup, sorry, breakup, breakthrough too, but when you go for a, for a breakup with a partner or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, uh, initially there's a very, uh, usually a bitter taste to it. And it's hard to relate to that person in a positive way, especially when the breakup is, you know, uh, has been rough and it takes a while of time for things to settle down. And for that time, you see only the negatives. But after a while, you can look back and say like, you know, actually, you know, well, not everything was was negative. There were positives too. And I feel it's uh, somewhat of a stage in my life right now where I can take a look back at Aikido and realize, you know, maybe there are some, there are some good things. And, and that's why for me, this talk with Francisco is kind of so symbolical is because as I said, he's one of the first people that I reached out to and 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 received guidance from in my initial stage of uh criticize well criticizing i guess and also taking a critical look at aikido and now there's a chance to uh, talk to him again after the journey uh, with a more positive mindset and to see again like so what can we discover right now uh together today so i don't know if this added anything new but <laughs> i felt inspired to add this short bit of explaining the intention behind this video because I think the intention is a very important aspect but that having that said say, said that now there were there are going to be no more special intros right now you're good to go uh, and enjoy the video so thank you for staying tuned in and enjoy so uh, I always like to start by saying on record that thank you very much for finding the time it's it's really a pleasure to see you again to interact with you and it's been a while since actually we were having a face-to-face -face conversation so I know. Yeah. And uh, so a bunch of questions I want to ask you, but actually suddenly I realized that I never had a chance to ask you properly what it's your background or kind of how you came to martial arts and both Aikido and other practices. Yeah. So um, I started when I was five years old. I started with Taekwondo, um, like Olympic style Taekwondo. Um, my mom had a, a great influence in my martial arts training. Like she was always like a, like a fan of the philosophy of the, you know, hard training, like learning, uh, you know, good principles to be a good person and to train your body and you know, be just you know, a strong person. So she always like pushed me towards uh, the martial arts realm, if you want to say. Yeah. Um, she always was, was like, oh, look at this Bruce Lee movie. Oh, look at this Van Damme movie. Uh, you know, and we were just like, oh, it was like a thing that we shared, right? So one day I just saw like a Taekwondo demonstration. I'm like, hey, mom, I want to do that. And she's like, yep, I know a couple of schools. Let's go check them out and let's sign you up. Um, and then when I was around probably six or seven, we were we were out there like um, this is all in Mexico City, mm -hmm. and we went to this uh, little plaza that it's kind of it's kind of like a rough neighborhood. Uh, but we were there just shopping like toys for me. I still remember I was buying like ninjas, like little ninja figurines for me. So anyway, we, we buy them. Uh, we're getting back to our car, and I just see this guy like kind of burly guy like approaching her from behind, uh, like straight to her, and I just thought it was like a guy that knew her you know I'm, I'm like mm. six or seven like i don't know what the hell it is and just grabs um my mom from her arm trying to snatch her purse and and starts like twisting her arm like backwards you know almost like a kimura kind of stuff like a cop grab from behind and you know like i just kind of got in shock in a in a little bit of shock uh but not from the guy from my mom she just starting like wailing and like hitting and banging and throwing elbows at that guy like she went berserk like i was like what i'd never seen her like that right yeah. uh turns out that she kind of grew up in a rough neighborhood herself so she knew how to handle herself in that nice. situation nice. and i just saw her like started like boom 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 like just hitting the guy like i saw the guy just receive like a like really hard hits probably he was on drugs or something because she was just like taking hits and still trying to snatch the purse anyway at the end he did he was you know he went running off and my mom kind of was like kind of like running after him but 
I, I like she told me like that me say like me telling her like mom 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 what's going on mom 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 like that's what kind of brought her back to reality and like oh right. damn I have my kid here let's get in and let's 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 leave so mm -hmm. so that that part kind of marked me like really like deeply like uh, okay like I want to be strong like my mom mm -hmm. I want to defend my kids when I when I have kids and now I have one. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of was like one of the big inspirations, you know, to, to like her pushing me, like you're in a good sense to train in that example that I saw was like, wow. Okay. And you know, also, you know, my dad was, you know, he trained a little bit of martial arts too. He, uh, he, he knew about it. Um, he was a really good, uh, shot. Like he liked handguns a lot. Uh, so it was, you know, a little bit of both, but especially that, um, you know, experience that, that, physical experience of seeing my mom do that was like okay i gotta train i gotta become strong and protect the people around me that that was pretty much it and you know like uh again like i had like really good luck in finding a very good teacher to this day i still uh text back and forth like you know not not that you know often but you know often enough with my uh, first taekwondo instructor like mm. he, he became like a really uh you know like a good figure for me and up to this day we still you know text and uh like you know i still you know share with him my you know achievements and you know he's always supporting and uh it, it's really cool so it was it was again i don't know if you can call it luck but my first instructor it's still you know really close to me right um so he's he installed in me he he was trying to instill in me um not only like you know obviously the martial you know technique uh but but also like good discipline responsibility and all that so it was it was like good you know like for for my formative years you know like i started at five years old and i competed and trained until i was like 19 almost 20. so it was a good you know good time um and it was funny you know like a, a lot of times i just wanted to quit and i was like no nah, i'm kind of done with this and my mom was like yeah, 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 sure. Like, just get the next belt and then we'll say thank you very much and then we'll go. I'm like, okay, cool. And once I got the next belt, I was like, oh, this is cool. I don't want to quit. <laughs> and just, you know, she kept me with that technique, like going on until I got my black belt and I was, you know, old enough to know what I wanted and, and just wanted right. to say. It was pretty cool from her, I think that. Very smart. And, uh, yeah. um, I know. So <laughs> anyway, like I had a chance to go and, you know, compete locally, compete, uh, we took a little trip to Korea where I had time to, uh, and a chance to, um, to train over there in the headquarters, the cookie one. And it was just like a really, really fun trip. Um, and then one day, like she, she comes along and she's like, Hey, you should uh, watch this, uh, above the law movie. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, I want to see kicks and other stuff. Like, I think that guy doesn't like throw punches or kicks. I'll, I'll watch it later. And one day she's like, come, come, let's watch it. I'm like, okay. And I saw it and I was like, okay, I want to train Aikido. Huh. How old were you? Like, like you were 19, 20? About, I was or? 20. I was 19, 19 okay. years old. And I was like, okay, I want to train that. And, and she's like, yeah, yeah, I know a couple of dojos around here. You want, you want to go check them? I was like, yeah. So she actually signed up and uh, we took like our first like month of classes together, right? And, uh, you know, then you know, she's doing her stuff. Like she didn't keep up with it. She, she kept a really close um, relationship actually up to this date with, uh, uh, with the wife of my instructor. Oh, she, she's also an instructor. So they're, they're still actually together. And when she teaches like self-defense seminars, my mom helps and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's how I started Aikido. And you know, I met my, my instructor. His name is Carlos, Carlos Cordero. And um, he, he has a, a, like a really long... Um, like training experience you know like he he started uh and he trained with all the you know main uh you know also say uh students that were here in america with uh yamada sensei with chiba sensei with uh kanai sensei um all of them and he has a really really good technique uh so again just by luck or whatever it is i i you know found him and uh again a really good mentor uh, but specifically about technique and about strain, I was like, okay, how is this old guy so healthy? 
happy, healthy, and so strong, and just manhandles me. Uh, like, I want that, you know? And also, um, you know, it, it, it was a couple, like, teaching Aikido. Like, uh, his wife was also extremely strong, like, flexible, strong, uh, good pace. I was like, okay, like, this Aikido thing must have some something to it, you know? So I yeah. just kept with it. Actually, I, I, uh, I did, a, like, a, like, a little, not properly uchi deshi because I was not living at the dojo, but I was you know, like coming in and out, like kind of like a Soto Deshi, like outside, you know, student. And I did that for like four years with them. Um, and um, the, the instructor, the head instructor we were assigned to by Yamada Sensei was uh, Kawahara, Kawahara Yukio Kawahara Sensei. Um, he, he's, uh, he was a very traditional uh, Aikido instructor but super humble, like super nice. Mm. Uh, and again, like uh, I'll, I'll send you some, some uh, parts, like there's, there's uh, some video on YouTube where I'm taking Ukemi for him uh, in a seminar uh, in New York City uh, in 2004 was this. I'll, I'll send you the video so you can, so you can mm. see it. Sure. Uh, you know, maybe I can put some, some over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm. like really good traditional Aikido, but strong. Um, practical as far as i was concerned uh, so that was pretty much it like that was that was my my aikido um you know starts in mexico city and uh, then i moved to dallas in 2006 mm. and uh i found another like really good instructor um and uh you know i just kept training and you know kept having fun and around that time when i moved to dallas uh I was like, okay, like, I feel I need a little bit of that, you know, competitive. Uh, but see, it's it's not that word. I don't want to use competitive. Mm -hmm. um, let's just call it pressure testing. You know, like mm -hmm. like uh, you know, having resistance, having light resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, with some of my friends, we did like we we kind of went like free. You know, resist. What happens if you? Sorry about that. What happens if you, like, don't go with the technique? What happens if you try to punch? So, you know, I was, like, still, like, curious about it, you know? Uh, but once I moved to Texas, like, at the beginning, I had some time. Uh, well, like, you know, got a job and got my papers in order and all that. So I started just going to this boxing gym, right? Like, just, you know, I, I saw a boxing gym close to the dojo. Um, uh, he, was, he, he was handled by these, uh, you know, Mexican guys. And super nice guy, like super nice guy. I was like uh, really happy to meet him. And and the way I wanted it uh, was just first purely defensive. Like, okay, like that. I, I don't know why I came up with this idea. Like what I need is to, to have a good, you know, defense against like, you know, the most basic things like strikes, right? So that's how I started. Like I used to ask the guy like, hey, you know, can you – can you allow me to get in the ring with your students? And I'm not going to punch back. I just need to, to block, to, to practice my uh, body movement, you know, my Tai Sabaki, my blocks and all that. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, just, you know, like little. And he's like, okay, you know, like let's, let's, let's go, you know, little by little. So he started, uh, and he started letting me go with it, like, like the beginners. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was fun. And little by little, just like over time, like uh, he started letting me go with uh, more more advanced students. Mm. And uh, then eventually I was just like, okay, let's, you know, I was also training. Uh, you know, he was like holding pads for me. So I was like, okay, let's, let's just go ahead and start sparring, right? Why mm. not? And uh, so, you know, I started like, you know, doing boxing like uh, alongside Aikido. And it's funny, like... Uh, you know, I, I also train, you know, I have trained other martial arts and I trained, you know, several martial arts. And to me, Aikido and boxing are the two that have the most similar principles, especially mm. in body movement, mm -hmm. like uh, triangular position, like uh, mm. angles, always looking for angles, uh, body movement, like uh, especially like uh, feet uh, movement, like Ashi Sabaki. Like, it's, it's very, very similar with boxing, right? Mm. At least the way I found it, and I, I found that connection, you know? Uh, all that um, good uh, mechanical uh, and structure from your skull that you have to align yourself to throw a correct punch, uh, like, 
that it can be or it should be i think applied to aikido techniques when you're throwing to have that really good posture you know really good uh skeletal and and muscular uh correct posture so you know like i was having like a lot of fun like you know practicing like a really like you know impact high impact you know thing like like boxing uh with the the softness of of the aikido techniques so you know i kind of like that a lot and, and that's 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 kind of like where i was for a while and then um i signed up at this uh gym in texas and uh i just started doing like full you know blown mma you know like obviously with my taekwondo background i did more you know i was more inclined to strike so you know i did more uh boxing and muay thai and you know after like four yeah after around four years training uh I, my, my circle was like hey do you want to do a uh a fight uh striking fight i'm like yeah yeah let's let's you know why not you know like i, I kind of missed like that competitive you know thing i was like yeah let's do it so i started competing in amateur uh muay thai and i did some uh you know a lot of smokers uh which is you know not sanctioned you know you just go to other gyms and you just like uh you know mm. spar uh sometimes it can be like a really good technical sparring sometimes it ends up in a fight you know, it's, <laughs> it's just what it is but hard sparring but it was fun so but again like the thing is that I, that never that never made me think oh aikido doesn't work oh aikido like it's useless so oh, aikido like i want to quit and i want to no like the like it was like a good combination like having these two things you know like i i i felt i was getting a lot from both and 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 to me like both were like like not um mutually exclusive you know and i had things from my you know i was at that time i was already you know had been training aikido for like 15 years uh like a lot of the techniques from Aikido and principles, I could apply in my, you know, MMA classes, in my jujitsu, in my sparrings. So I was like, yeah, it works. I mean, mm. the other day I was uh, listening to, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was this podcast online. I think it was Ramsey, Ramsey the way I, I follow him, and I, you know, like his stuff. And uh, he was telling that too, like, you know, he had this student and he was doing this, you know, uh, Aikido-like technique. And, um, and I, I, the way he put it is like, yeah, like this works, but you just have to know how to fight. Yeah. yeah. And I agree. I, I think that is true to any traditional martial art, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, karate, karate, uh, kicks, punches work if you know how to fight. If you know how to, you know, deal with blocks and punches and kicks and takedowns uh, and you can throw your, you know, kung fu techniques um i mean as long as you know how to fight your technique is gonna work so you know to me it was that you know like i was at the mma gym just learning how to fight and i was just enjoying the you know tradition and all that uh appeal of the asian martial arts through aikido so to me it was a good combination mm. and you know obviously like um there's there's the aspect of the ground fighting so you know for that either judo or jiu-jitsu it's the best um yeah. so you know they had a um um good good instructor like uh you know like Dallas is like really big really really big on jiu jitsu so you know I found a good instructor and uh you know started training and uh when I moved here to California that's that's what I have been uh you know keeping on with like jiu jitsu and aikido yeah. Yeah. uh a very quick uh, question, uh, so we can later expand into it. But so, do you train Aikido actively these days, or is it still just right part now? Of your I'm work? not. I'm not training it at a dojo. I'm just um, teaching some classes every now and then, hmm. and um, that's pretty much it. Like uh, you know, I I do like you know my bulking work on my own, and you know. When I'm like, you know, rolling, I try to apply those techniques, you know, on my own, work on yeah. principles. But like, uh, I'm I'm not part of any dojo right now. Right. Okay. Um, you know, it's just time time wise. Like, you know, right now, like, I'm really, you know, dedicated to to my family. Uh, you know, I just have a, a little two year old boy, and you know, I I really wanna, you know, put all my time and effort uh, into you know my family part. 
Uh, sure. So yeah, you know, at the moment I'm not, uh, you know, part of any dojo, but I still, uh, you know, when, if there's, uh, you know, an interesting seminar, you know, around here in California, I would, I would attend. And uh, it's just that, uh, you know, once a month uh, class that I'm doing with uh, uh, Josh Gold from Aikido Journal. Yeah. From Ikutsuchi Doyo. So mm -hmm. that's pretty much all the, the interaction that I have with Aikido uh, these right. days. I was just curious, so I would have it in the back of my mind. I'll probably come back yeah, yeah. to that sub subject later. Uh, but one question I wanted to ask in terms of, uh, in relationship to what you spoke about uh, up to now, uh, the starting point of Aikido, uh, I know that was, especially back in that day, I heard many, many people starting Aikido because of Above the Law and the whole Steven Seagal uh, presentation. Yeah. I know it's like a, it was a big thing, but it's, I also think a part of people started Aikido because of its philosophy, and especially these days, I think that's probably one of the major drawing points for Aikido. I agree. Mm. So how was it for you with Aikido and philosophy? Did you first go in Aikido because it was badass? Uh, yes. For, and, but did you later, as you went through, discover the philosophy, or how did, how did that happen for you? So yeah, that's that's definitely the case with me. Um, you know, I first started Aikido just because it looked badass on screen, yeah. and uh, and you know, like like uh, you know, I just wanted to to learn to do those moves and learn to you know just just be that effective, uh, you know, fluid and strong. Uh, but later, definitely, what kept me uh, going and kept me interested in Aikido was the philosophy more so. The life of uh, the founder, right. the life of O Sensei, and I think to this day it's one of the strongest points that you know that I'm interested in Aikido, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll go back to the technical aspect uh, of it, but yeah, definitely the philosophy of it, it. It was like extremely interesting for me. So I was just like you know devouring like Aikido books, like you know like by all the authors, but uh, you know a lot of it like. You know, I was I was also trying to take it with a grain of salt because, yeah, yeah. yeah the translation, you know, I, a lot could be lost in translation, right? Yeah, especially so, in Japanese. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what it meant at the time that it said, what was the situation? Right. Uh, it's just a lot of things, right? But yeah. overall, like just looking at his life, or, or, or the accounts of his life, um, like to me was just a, a great martial artist. Mm. That that has some some fame in uh, in a time and in a place where they were, you know, people that knew how to fight. Yeah. Uh, yes. Also, there's a part that you know, especially in Japan, there's that um, respect for the elderly and respect for the instructor. Right. Uh, so you know, just take all that into consideration. But overall, mm. like. Um, just, just his life and, 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 his, and his message, you know, more than the philosophy. I think just his message, um, like, resounded a lot with me. Just, just being nice, uh, be good, be strong, uh, take responsibility for yourself. Uh, you know, don't blame things on somebody else. And this is this is not new, you know. Like, I mean, there's a lot of uh, religions, a lot of uh, philosophies from from other parts that have the same concepts. And, yeah. you know, this is, I think this is true, like, not only philosophically, but on, also in technique. Like, if something has a good principle, you will find it across many disciplines, right? right. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing, how, how do they say there's nothing new under the sun, right? Like, like mm -hmm. if you think something, you find something is not new, it probably has been done. It probably has been done before uh, and better, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you just got to find that. You just got to find that. So, but in the case of that, uh, you know, nice philosophy of, of, of uh, trying to grow, you know, trying to be a, a good human being, strong, capable, uh, I, I just liked it a lot. And the, the philosophy of Austin Sage just, you know, resounded to me, like, really well. So, yeah, yeah. agreed. Like, first it was the... the sex appeal like the coolness yeah. of it yeah, and yeah. then just finding the the philosophy right um and you know like i i also saw that um kind of like fanatism 
when people like go like bananas over the the, the philosophy and like mm. all the the energy and like all the spiritual stuff cool like yeah that's that's all good like like if you through a through a physical activity find like some spiritual connection that that's pretty cool right uh just like yoga like why not uh just just make sure that you know what you're doing and and don't delude yourself or your students in thinking that just praying and doing that you will be effective in a violent situation that's that's the thing that i that i really uh was just like always like kind of frowning upon like uh, I, okay i mean you're spiritual cool but that doesn't mean you're effective in combat yeah right that so, actually i'll just chip in quickly because that very naturally leads me to one of the points i wanted to bring up and uh, i don't know if you know that i've quoted you for like dozens of times like i, I can't recount how many times a particular thought I kind of stole from you, but I always, you know, I always tell it's, it's coming from you. Uh, that's, uh, I think you said it in an interview that I've seen uh, done with you, but I don't know if you even told me that directly. Might, it might have been, but anyway, it's that, that phrase that if you want to be a peaceful warrior or a pacifist, you have to be capable of violence. And the whole concept yes. that, right, if you, if, you, if you are not capable of violence, you're just kind of, an escapist you're you're and i can relate to that years and years ago i was like that you know I, I was always a pacifistic but part of me was sometimes in some occasions was more pacifistic because i didn't you know don't have an option right exactly so so i really love that quote i i used it so many times uh so i just wanted to ask you so how did you came to discover that idea and if you can comment more about it so again, like I, I think it was like a phrase and an idea that I saw like in many places and I heard it in, uh, you know, with instructors too. Um, and, and, you know, that, that was like probably not in that specific, uh, you know, this, those specific words, but, but yeah. that was the concept. And, and that's what I understood, you know, like, um, okay, like if you want to, you know, root for, for peace, for justice, but if you cannot defend it, then that's empty, right? That's just a, a wishful thinking. But if you have the strength to back it up, the, 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 the moral strength, the spiritual, the, the mind strength, and the physical capability of defending it, then, then that's, that's something really uh, commendable, you know? Like, like you are really a pacifist because you can be, you know, a you know, bad person. Uh, but but you decide to go for like the good way justice and yeah. peace yeah. and keep things like you know good so I, I think that has a lot of value so i think yeah a lot of a lot of people that yeah, that turn to martial arts specifically to aikido they they want to you know follow and defend this this idea of peace but they they cannot physically defend it right and yeah like there's there's that uh I think it's just a, a, an idea. Uh, how do you call it when, when you just have like preset idea? I just forget the word. Um, um, can, anyway, can, yeah, yeah. Do you just do you just have that that uh, you know preset idea that uh, oh you know if there's conflict like you know I'm gonna avoid it. Well, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you gotta stand your ground and defend yourself or defend some other people. So if you don't have the, the capability of, you know, technically and physically of, of doing that, then that's not much of a, you know, peaceful warrior, so to speak. Yeah. 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 I really love it. So, like that, that phrase just stuck with me and I used it many times to describe one of the, the challenges I feel Aikido is facing. And, and I, by no means I want it. And I, I, I don't want to make this video solely about that. I, I really yeah. try to more look at the positive side mm -hmm. of it. Uh, but I think, yeah, Aikido, in my opinion, struggles sometimes a little bit with that balance of you know, peace and violence. And it sometimes avoids and pushes violence to the side, expecting, like you said, that if we're going to be spiritual, it's all going to work out on its own. But yeah. it's, you know, it's a tricky type of thinking. So. But see, again, like, um, I think people just, just follow the, the end result of, 
Austin says philosophy and just right. focus on the love and peace. But that's why I like to try to research as much as possible about the life, like how he got there. Not right. the end result, because you're missing all the, the journey, right? right? Yeah. So go back and see how, how his life was, you know, in, in what era was he developing his martial arts and his philosophy. And it was a, an era of war. It was, you know, World War II. So yeah. it was not a peaceful time. So I, I sometimes, like, you know, feel in... Uh, believe that Austin says philosophy was very close related to let's just say uh Gandhi's philosophy you right. know he was also like you know non-violent resistant but 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 he was strong like to be able to do that you must be really really strong like spiritually mind you know your mind should be really strong yeah. uh, you know in case of Gandhi yeah he was probably not a warrior per se not a martial arts you know master but he had that that conviction and that you know strength within him to say like okay like we gotta fight for something and i think that's what people are forgetting you know like yeah also says philosophy was that of peace but why because he saw what violence can do i believe so yeah. then you're like okay i got i gotta be um like strong enough to keep the peace around here you know, in, in my circle, in my environment, within myself. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do believe uh, that. Uh, and, and there's this, you know, like doing, doing all this training. Obviously, you, you uh, find yourself, uh, you know, training, you know, combatives and, you know, looking at, uh, you know, military, uh, you know, mindset and military like, quotes and all that. And I, I do believe like uh, also like uh, I like this quote a lot where it says that the, the only – response or the only solution for for uh, bad people are good people that are good at violence right oh yeah uh, that's a good one i love it <laughs> so I, I i think it's true and i think we should just you know train ourselves um so so we can stop that violence and then we're really peaceful because we're promoting peace in in the real way not just philosophically but physically we can if we have the means to do it you know, uh, enforce, let's just say, like, you know, peace and uh, harmony and all that stuff that, you know, we like from Aikido. Um, but you have to be able to do it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's kind of better. Uh, yet again, that naturally leads me to another question. And uh, I, I've pushed that whole exploration a little bit to the side for the past, past half a year or a year or so. Uh, so there's a chance that things changed, but from as far as I can see, I don't think the situation changed dramatically yet. And by which situation, I mean the uh, whole Aikido, global situation of Aikido. Uh, I personally have the uh, image that it is a bit in a crisis, like identity crisis or, or a challenge to find its place in the world as a practice or as a martial art. Uh, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is blowing up all over the place and and I think the Aikido is struggling to, to find its message. Or, and so that whole subject. Uh, so do you feel that that is true? That it's, there's a bit of an identity crisis or, or challenge for Aikido to establish itself in the world? And if yes, then uh, what, what do you think about that situation? What do you think might, could be a good solution for it? Like what could, be, uh, what could it do about it? I know it's a hard question, but... So, in, in general, it, it seems like that in the mainstream. Right. Right? It seems there's kind of like an identity crisis in the mainstream. And uh, there's a lot of bickering and fighting and, and defending and back and forth in online forums. Mm -hmm. In the, you know, less like social media, man. It's just, it's just that social media has brought more, more uh, wrongs than good. But anyway. Um, so in, in that, like in the surface, in the mainstream, uh, it, it is, you know, there's a lot of like all defending Aikido. Oh, it works. Oh, no, it sucks. Uh, but I think all the people that are trying to defend it and that are like um, trying to discredit it, I think all those like probably there's hundreds, thousands of people that are between that. I think most of them don't even train mm. or don't even train seriously mm. or, or don't have enough experience to talk about it. Uh, some of them do, and you know, you, they just get caught in all this, like, oh, back and forth, and it works and it doesn't. Ah. 
Um, so yeah, like in the surface, I, I think it has that kind of, um, you know, struggle to, to find a place. But um, if, you, if you see the global uh, numbers of Aikido practitioners, I think, I think it's fine. I okay. think like the, the, the core don't give a damn about what's going on in social media. Mm. Uh, okay. If you go to the main source, to Japan, like people there practice Aikido not to be fighters, not to be badasses. They, they just like it. It's part of the tradition, uh, just mm. along with, uh, you know, any other art that you can, you know, mention. Like just people choose Aikido and, and, and they like it. They find the, either the philosophy or the movement of it interesting and it's a healthy thing for them. So uh, it doesn't matter how, you know, many combat arts come along. Like people that like Aikido, they're still going to sign up for their Aikido dojo. Okay. Uh, in France, that it's another place that it's like, you know, like a big place, uh, big numbers for Aikido. Yeah. They, they're still training and, you know, they might adapt some, some techniques from other arts, and, mm. but, but their practice is still strong and their, their numbers, uh, they're good. Mm. Uh, yeah, here in America, in uh, North America, I think, and, you know, all over America, I think it's, it's kind of like, like the whole America, it's like, yeah, a little more uh, geared towards like the the cool stuff, you know, yeah, jiu-jitsu, right. you know, MMA, you know, it has like a lot of following and, you know, like yeah. it's, it, it's just cool to do it, you know, so right. yeah. you know, people follow it more and yeah, it, like Aikido might struggle a little bit here um, to get, you know, you know, I think it's going to struggle to get more, to get new students. Like yeah. young and interested new students because students are going to be like, okay, what am I going to gain out of training in an Aikido Dojo that I will not gain from training? And this is a question I posted in, uh, in uh, the, uh, the forum, the Aikido, the martial side. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't get a, a, a good answer. Right. I was like, okay, for all you guys that love Aikido, and I love it and I still train it, you know, like as yeah. much as I can. Like what? do you gain out of an Aikido training that you cannot gain somewhere else? Right, yeah. And, and name one thing. Nobody could do it because uh, everything that they say, I, I, I had an answer and, and you can right. find it somewhere. The philosophy, uh, you know, do, do, you know, study Buddhism, you can yeah. find the philosophy there. All the, the techniques, I mean, technically you have like a lot of art, like you have Yudo the has throws uh, and pins, uh, Aikijutsu, that it's, you know, a little, you know, different, but, you know, like there's nothing particular, you know, to Aikido. Like you just like it because you like it. You know, that's mm. it. Like you feel happy with it. You feel good with it. And if you're getting what you need out of it, then you don't need an explanation, you know, because anything that you can mention out of Aikido that you're getting, you can get in some other art or some other discipline, mm. you know? Mm. So in that way, the people that like it are gonna stay with it, right? Mm. And the only struggle that I see is, yeah, like getting new, new and younger students, you know? I think like, especially in America, um, Aikido population is like uh, getting older and mm. it, they're not getting many new younger students because yeah. what are they offering, you know? What do we have to offer to, to younger generations? Um, so yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of struggle, but I don't think it's it's something that the Aikido World Headquarters is going to be concerned about. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. I I did think about that question a lot as well, that, that particular question of what is it, what's the USP, you know, the unique selling product or the unique thing that Aikido offers to the table. And... I very much like your approach of what you said. If you like it, you just like it. Uh, I, I appreciate that approach, and I think it's a good one. Uh, it's some people just forget that that's an important aspect as well. That you don't always need to win a fight, you know, a competitive fight between two per se products or practices. You can always yes. you know, choose. And there's even a saying in my native tongue, which is goes more or less like, uh, "There's no arg arguing for taste." You know, you, you yes, either like it or not, that's you don't argue good, about that's, it, right? Yeah. Uh, there's like a, uh, another thing is, uh, are you still with me? Oh, yes. I think, okay, there you go. I lost Yes, I'm here. Uh, so another thing I just wanted to quickly reflect about on what you said, too, is 
uh, and I just actually was kind of discussing it about that with Matt Porton, my my BJJ, uh, I'd say mentor, instructor. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he's um, he he brought that idea up, which I liked a lot. Is that we too often we form an opinion these days based on s what we see on social media, kind of like yes. if you you know if there's a lot of videos of. I don't want to make this political, so I'll, I, I have to think about what to use, you know, what to use an option for. But let's say, you know, martial arts, one, you see a bunch of videos of, let's say, Aikido Dojo is being half empty. It's It may lead to some observation, but it doesn't mean it's a fact. We rely too much on it. So I appreciate you saying that as well, like that the, whatever we see online does not yet state what that is. But so those are a couple of my reflections. A question I wanted to ask, in relationship to this and again it's it's a difficult one and uh, there is you know, I, I keep questioning that myself as well but i don't know if we are in position to create that answer but i'm just curious about your opinion the sure. uh, the appeal to the younger generation of aikido so would you say would your kind of intuitive uh, feeling would be that it would be a good for thing for aikido to just focus on whoever comes and continue to be as it is, or do you feel like there should be some adaptation and yes, then what? So what, what do you think about that kind of challenge? Solving that challenge? So I think obviously like it has to keep its own appeal, you know, its own appeal of being a Japanese martial art of having that philosophical, uh, you know, goal, of uh, you know peace, uh, you know harmony, like it, it has to keep its own uniqueness, definitely. Yeah. Um, so in the in the philosophical sense, I think it's it's good, and I think it has a lot to offer, right? Like if yeah. you like that approach through Japanese culture and philosophy, that's that's great, and that should be kept. <laughs> now, um, if if what people are looking for, it's just a martial flavored movement, hmm. um, then again, that's that's cool, you know. But I I think if, if you're gonna call something martial, hmm. martial art, it should teach effective way of dealing with violence. It should hmm. teach some form of combat. So, right. um, and and again, like I I I would like to go back and, and, and think about the words of Austin say, like if it was translated correctly, that is. But uh, <laughs> yeah. he was saying like uh, that that Aikido evolves, you know, his art evolves, and I think mm. anything evolves. And and I agree, you know, this is a phrase that Tristan uses a lot, and I agree with it. If if something is not evolving, it's dying. Mm. So. Uh, if you see that, you know, there's all these combative uh, sports mm. and, and it has, and, and it's not about the techniques, you know, it's not about the physical techniques. Like the techniques are not the problem. The problem is the methodology of training, you yeah. know, the lack of pressure testing, the lack of sparring. Um, I wrote uh, a little uh, article for a, for a Mexican uh, martial arts magazine mm. uh, where it, they were asking like, is, is competition good for Aikido? Mm. So what I tried to say was that pressure testing is good for Aikido, yeah. you know, like you're powering like uh, resistance, but it was kind of interpreted in like, Oh, like Francisco thinks that Aikido should have competition. No, <laughs> it's not competition. It's just that, you know, aliveness right yeah. right yeah. and and i do think that the methodology um I, I would benefit you know aikido a lot just right. um just putting uh just pressure testing to your to your way of training i think that would you know one make the the, the technique and the strategies more applicable and more effective and and that would attract people oh you know like besides the philosophy and besides the you know japanese culture and the samurai appeal like i can actually learn how to defend myself um yeah. with aikido so I, I think that would benefit a lot too Got it. you know if you're a martial arts instructor you should be able to do some 
kind of you know physical thing you know like and teach it too so one of the ideas sometimes that floats around the aikido is and something i consider too is ditching the martial arts aspect you know it's just like well like tai chi for example and i i sometimes play the devil's advocate myself like i i take on a certain position and i argue more for that position to kind of better understand where it's coming from it doesn't necessarily always mean that I really believe it 100%. But one of those moments I had, I was considering, okay, so Kendo is not criticized as, you know, like a, on a big level for not being an effective martial art. Tai Chi is, unless it claims, again, to be effective, then it's troublesome, but usually it doesn't claim that so often. And then it's popular, it's appreciated. Uh, even Capoeira, well, I, I don't have a clear opinion whether Capoeira, how effective it is. Some people uh, told me they they have a strong opinion it's it's effective i'm not sure but uh but still it doesn't get criticized that much some people just see it as this playful thing so there are some examples so one idea i guess aikido could technically go to that uh path and ditch the martial arts aspect and say okay we are philosophical practice you know with some martial flavor but we're not really a martial art technically it would help bring up its reputation, clear up the reputation, which sometimes is questionable, at least online. Uh, but then is that really a way to go? So what, what's your opinion about that? Should, is that a valid way to go? Or would you argue that actually it's, it, that shouldn't be done and the martial, should, the martial pressure testing side should be more you know, cherished? So what, what do you think? So in, you know, in, in this case, I'm, I'm biased to say, I'm biased to say that um, the martial uh, technicality of the art should be pursued, right? Uh, why? Again, because my main focus or my main inspiration or my main point to, to Aikido is, is uh, its founder, its Dosensei. And he was a martial artist. He was mm -hmm. a person capable of physical violence and of dealing with that violence and establishing harmony, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. if if I want to practice what he ended up, you know, the, the result of all his life was Aikido. That's, that's how he expressed it, right? And, mm -hmm. and his life was full of, you know, dealing with violence and establishing peace. So I think the, the, the physical side should be pursued, definitely. And like, like I said, you know, when, when things evolve, things grow, not necessarily change, but but just adapt and evolve, you know, a little bit to the modern times. And, um, and, and that's a little bit of what I did. It's like, okay, what is the best deal to, to deal? What is the best way to deal with a punch? Uh, boxers know that, you know, I don't yeah. have to go and rediscover the wheel. So let's go study boxing. Yeah. You know, what's the best deal to be, de what's the best way to deal with, um, you know, ground uh, fighting, okay? Jiu-Jitsu, uh, you know, wrestling catch wrestling, whatever. So just go and study that, like study principles and, and, and just learn how to fight, you know, adapt that. And then you can still, uh, you know, pursue and, 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 and teach your, your uh, peaceful philosophy. But now you have a, a, a strong physical base and ground where, where you can actually defend that, that philosophy, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, like the, the technical aspect of Aikido, like, yeah, just a you know, couple of dozen you know pins, couple of dozen throws that it has, and the way it shows, uh, it's good, and that can still be kept, and that's like you know part of like the aikido thing. Uh, but but if you wanna teach somebody how to fight, just learn how to fight, and just teach them that you know, teach them how to you know take somebody down like in a, in an effective way. Now the other thing is that aikido also. Um, claims uh, to teach uh, in a self-defense aspect and not in a sports combat aspect. Well, that's worse. Like, like self-defense <laughs> is like worse violence, uh, you know, more unexpected, uh, you know, yeah. worse results than, than a sports match, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think like a sports uh, approach to, to combat, it's the safest way in the closest way that the closest thing that you can get to actual violence. Yeah. So if your technique is not going to work in a, in a sports aspect, again, I'm not saying competition. I'm saying, uh, you know, a live, uh, you know, sparring, a live training, like, you know, resistance, uh, 
if, if it doesn't work there, then of course it's not going to work in a real situation, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, there's also the, the, the kind of like a myth, um, you know, in Aikido that, oh, the technique is so good that, you know, it cannot be used in here in competition, <laughs> whatever, it's going to break somebody. No, yeah. it's not like, you know, like, uh, you know, judo, jiu-jitsu, wrestling have techniques that break bones also. And they yeah. train, they are trained every single day, you know, and yeah. you just need to tap and you just need to, you know, train with a good methodology. That's it. Uh, so I, I do think that, um, you know, if, if people want to, and, and, you know, this is the thing, like, I think Aikido philosophy has a lot of good things to offer, right? So I think it's kind of like a, like a disservice to a lot of students that would benefit from that philosophy. Right. Um, that, you know, you're kind of pushing them away from your dojo yeah. because you cannot teach them how to fight. Yeah. So, yeah, they will learn how to fight, but they will not learn this philosophy. I mean, maybe they will. Maybe they will, like, study Buddhism or study another kind of, yeah. you know, and they will learn it. But but if you can offer that all in one place, I think that would be cool. Like, yeah. just thinking about my case, like, you know, I had the means and I had the chance to, like, practice Aikido and practice boxing and practice Muay Thai and practice Jiu-Jitsu and, you know, have, you know, family time and, you know, work full time. Uh, but not everybody can do that or not everybody's willing to. So if you can offer a class where you can give your students that, you know, Aikido philosophy, but you teach them how to fight, I think like dojos would be full. I agree. Right? I, I was kind of playing with a diff with a similar idea on my own and kind of reflecting back at Aikido without the, all the negative taste that I had for a while. And I was imagining if there would be a practice, which is a very difficult thing to, to make happen, but not to seem possible. But let's say there's a practice which definitively makes you a bat into a badass, kind of almost like Steven Seagal level in, you know, above the law. But then it would also bring together the philosophy of Aikido. So you would know, because that's what attracted me. I, I wanted to defend myself. I wanted to defend my friends. Uh, I, I grew up being exposed to violence, and that's what I expected from my kid on that lured, uh, drew, drew me in because it promised me that I will become a badass and I will be that pacifist that ideally, you know, you described. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and that brought me to the, my whole journey, which most people are aware of. But 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 when I imagine that practice, if that would be there, even like. Even and not to say that, that that I'd say that's a solution, but even if Brazilian, there would be a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school which would be focusing on the Aikido philosophy or or the, even like a boxing gym, whatever, I'd be like, oh crap, this is interesting. I, I I'd be interested to try it out myself. So I, I really agree with you when you say that there that's a disservice that it, it, there's no kind of bridge between uh, for for the people who are interested in both the philosophy and actual physical power prove us yes and i think like you know like the 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 people the people that uh the people that are um uh, interested in both should should benefit you know from from both like why why like uh take that away from them you know again like they can go to you know a jiu-jitsu dojo and learn all the you know effective techniques and if they're lucky and they have a good teacher you know, the teacher will give them some philosophy. I mean, again, you don't need this philosophy to be a good person. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's like a, like a basic thing. You just got to think a little bit about it. You know, just don't be, don't be a jerk. Like, you know, if you help, if you can help, um, you know, don't get into an, other people's businesses and just be nice, you know, overall, just be nice. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of like people that are good at violence are really nice. Yeah. Same, same here. Right? My experience as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I saw this thing in, in Aikido where people that were not capable of dealing with violence were kind of like all, you know. Arrogant, I guess. Just like arrogant. Yeah, yeah I think that yeah, would yeah. be the word. Like, like arrogant. So I think it goes hand to hand. Like, you're good in violence. Like, you're, you're nice because you, you know what that result ends. Not only for yourself, but for some other people, right? And again, that has a lot to do with, with self-defense, you know, like, um, 
it's just like uh, I, I, I always or not always, but I, I started thinking about that uh, that you mentioned in your last video about uh, how Aikido claims a peaceful resolution. But the techniques, if you actually do them, they're, yeah. they're pretty brutal. They're, yeah. they're yeah. you know, yeah. they're bad. Uh, and, and I agree completely with you. Like, you know, wrestling or jujitsu techniques can actually enable you to, to do a peaceful resolution, right. you know, like without getting hurt and without hurting too much. So anyway, yeah. uh, but again, I, I don't know, like, um, it was, it was kind of strange and, and people always like from both sides, like my Aikido friends and my MMA friends always were like, oh, and you still training that and why you haven't quit Aikido. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, like, I just, I just find like, there's, there's something that I'm getting from both, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I definitely would like to have all that under one dojo, under right. one roof. And so people don't have to, you know, be going back and forth. Sure. And I, I think that would be cool. And I think if, if uh, future Aikido instructors uh, can offer that, um, I think I think dojos will be, uh, you know, yeah. getting their numbers up. I agree. It's it's a great thing you're you're saying. And uh, I'm I'm close to wrapping up. But one of the last questions I had is, if if we would play a this game, mental game of uh, simplifying things and you looking at yourself and, and breaking yourself down into, you know, this martial art, that martial art, or this philosophy, that philosophy, how would you, I know it's not as that simple, that's, that's why I'm saying a game, but uh, having those conditions, how, how many percentage would you give yourself as an Aikido? You know, like how much percentage of you you'd say is Aikido if we play that game? Uh, let's say 100% Jedi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need technique. I just use the force and. I'm oh yeah, like like all high level like keto guys. <laughs> yeah, but for real. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Man, that's that's a very good question. So, are you speaking like physically, like physical technique? I'm honestly more interested in the philosophy aspect myself at the moment. But but both would be interesting to hear. Like, if you, would you would you distinct and say like physically that's how much and philosophically that's that's how much, or would you put them together? Okay, the philosophical part is easy. Like I would say, like ninety percent Aikido. Got it. Mm. You know, and and uh, again, not 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 the mainstream, not the like, you know, key projecting uh, yeah. harmony. You know, freak. No, like. Like just just a life of us and say it's what inspired me is what keeps inspiring me to 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 mm. seek that peaceful that harmonious resolution right mm. Mm. Um, but with what means the physical means then yeah like uh, then I, I would say like Aikido would be like I don't know I'm just gonna throw a number out the twenty five percent yeah I was kind of expecting like all the you know wrist locks uh, throws. Uh, deflective defenses uh movement you know it's it's there it's applicable and, and mm. it, it can be used um obviously like what i started doing was kicking with taekwondo in uh in in my amateur fights that's what i use the most mm. so i don't know i would say like uh probably 50 percent of, of my technical arsenal relies on kicking yeah and um with Muay Thai, when I learned like, you know, different types and, you know, low kicks and, you know, different hard, you know, ways of kicking, you know, that just like augmented that, that kicking capability. And that's, yeah. that's, you know, the thing that I use most on my fights. Um, and the, I don't know, let's see. So that's what, 75% Ish, <laughs> percent yeah. of my arm yeah. down right now. And I would say, um the rest would be like at this moment uh probably you know the 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 thing that i'm training now and that i'm trying to focus a little more on is uh jiu jitsu yeah so you know i would say like uh like jiu jitsu it's, it's a big part of that rest and and you know like also i did like you know boxing and i like the the philosophy and the the training of it but uh you know, I, I think that the grappling aspect would be a little more and the last part would be the, you know, the boxing, you know, movement that is kind of integrated with the, 
Aikido movement too. Mm. So yeah, there yes. you go. That's a, that was a hard question. <laughs> I love your answer. It's it's a good answer. And uh, I was kind of ex expecting similar numbers. Uh, maybe was even happily surprised. Not really surprised, but happily hearing ninety percent Aikido philosophy. But that naturally makes me ask. So what is Aikido philosophy for you then? What what is that ninety percent? What what is that mindset or or what, how you, would you describe it? Um, just in general, what, what I, or the, the perspective, or the idea that I have gotten with all these years of, you know, training and, and uh, reading, um, it's trying to keep like that harmony first, you know, on, on yourself, within yourself, right? Uh, which means just trying to lead a good life, you know? like trying not to get uh just just i mean it's it's a basic philosophy and i think like again most uh disciplines and most uh, you know religions have the same base you know just just be nice just mm. you know help out if you can and don't be a jerk to the neighbor that's it mm. so uh but you know I'm, I'm just again inspired by the way Austin say did it you know like he 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 was an example of that and he was a badass so that's yeah. that's just the, the inspiration that i get so you know that harmonious resolution starts with you mm. you know being strong so again like if, if you're in a discussion in a in a, um and and you know this is something uh, that nowadays is called also verbal judo you know like how to de-escalate yeah right um and and i think that Okay, if you, you want to talk about the philosophy of Aikido, like that should be practiced more. And if you want to teach self-defense, that should be practiced more in the dojos. Like, you know, how to de-escalate a violent situation. Because, right. uh, yeah, they talk about like, oh, you know, I'll just avoid it. Do you train how to avoid it? Do you have the, yeah. you know, technical, mental uh, tools on how to de-escalate a violent situation? If you're not, then, then again, it's just wishful thinking. Right. It's the yeah. same as the technique, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like in, in real, you know, world self-defense, like, you know, avoidance, de-escalation, all that is extremely important. So if I get is claiming to teach that, then it should be practiced, yeah. you know, in, in that sense. Right. So anyway, um, you know, just, just have that, that strength uh, first within yourself to, you know, just not get like uh, your ego hurt. You know, so you don't have to get into a physical altercation, right? Yeah. So if you're strong, if you know what you're worth, if you know what you, if you know your way in life, then then whatever somebody else uh, thinks of you or gives an opinion, it's just that it's just an opinion. And I don't know, like I just felt that you know I got through that way of thinking through the philosophy of you know yeah. Austin awesome right? right? Um, so you know it it starts with the you know mental, uh, spiritual aspect if you wanna call it. Uh, just like personal interactions all the way through the, uh, you know, physical, uh, physical violence realm. I mean, violence is violence. You, you just have to know how to deal with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if it's an attack, like verbal attack yeah. uh, and from who, you know, like some, some, some attacks, you can just walk away mm -hmm. physically and verbally too. But um uh, Let's just say you, you have a, a discussion, you have a disagreement with your wife. You cannot walk away from that. You have yeah. to, you know, have the, the spiritual and the mental strength to stay there and to mm. find a peaceful resolution, to find a harmonious resolution, right? Mm. So it, it and, and same thing, you know, physically, like, yeah, most problems, you can just like not be at the right, at, at the wrong place. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, not be out there like drinking and partying and, and, you know, just being at a bar where there's going to be a fight or, you know, just hanging out with the wrong people. Like, you just avoid that. But what if like a bad person comes to you once you wants to do harm to you or your loved ones? You have to have the capability, skills, physical skills to deal with that. Right. So to me, I got that a little bit from my kid and, and there's this, um, this passage uh, that I that I really like uh, that it's told about um, one of uh, one of Boston State students. I think it was 
Nishio Sensei, mm. which uh, it was another inspiration because, yeah, he was a, a, a high level karate guy, mm. high level judo guy high level weapons guy yeah. but he chose aikido too to 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 put all that integrated so i was like yeah like that's that's kind of what i'm trying to go yeah. for you know and anyway he was saying that you know he was still training judo at that time and um there was a, a burglar like breaking into one of like the the high level instructors i think it was uh kyuso mifune which was like one of the highest level uh, Kodokan judo guys mm. and, and that he said like oh man like if I catch this guy like even if I get killed I'm gonna teach him a lesson you know I'm gonna you know stop him and um, and then um, at the Aikido dojo somebody stole some uh, I think Koichi Tohei's jacket like expensive American leather jacket huh. and Otensei was like oh that was whoever brought the jacket here and tempted the guy that didn't have it it's your fault it's not the thief's fault yeah. it's your fault for bringing somebody something that somebody else wants and um so you created a thief mm. so it's your fault <laughs> as an aikido practitioner i love that mm. i don't think we should be out there blaming it on the government on mm. my partner on the work on the pandemic on the no just take responsibility for yourself mm. um and, and when you do that, it, it's very liberating mm -hmm. uh, the way I have done it. Like, you're not blaming anybody. You're just like, oh, I failed here. So let's do something and work. So, you know, I, I, I don't fall into the same, you know, mistake again. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think it's just really, um, it, it keeps like a lot of harmony inside your mind, at least, because you're not having a, a conflict, even if it's imaginary or real like a conflict, like, oh, that person did this to me, you know? It's not like, it's more like, oh, I put myself in this situation, so I'm going to avoid it next time, right? And, and that I learned from Aikido, and that has helped me a lot. And, um, you know, I, 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 I consider that I have a, a really happy, peaceful life thanks to that way of thinking, you know? Right. So, yeah. Nice. I love it. That was awesome. I want to say and ask, I want to ask the very, very last question. And I, I, I presume this will be a quick one, but I know this could be, this answer could be expanded into forever. And I'm even in the back of my mind thinking that maybe in the future we could connect up about this particular subject. But let's say this is a short one for this one. So uh, what inspires you about Batman since you're wearing a Batman t-shirt? Ha, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's a very nice one, by the way. I should look it up online. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna send it to you, actually. Oh, um, I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna send you one because uh, I know you appreciate it. So anyway, <laughs> like <clears throat> I get a lot of inspiration from um, you know, like comic book figures and video games, and so <clears throat> and <clears throat> it's it's just like that that like like that uh, mythology, if you want to, you know, see it like that. Yeah. I, I think that has always been the case, you know, like, you know, ancient Greeks were inspired by, by that mythology of like Hercules and Zeus and like yeah. these gods and demigods. And, and then that inspired them to just, you know, do great things in life, right? Yeah. I either through war or through studies or through, you know, whatever. Um, so I get a lot of inspiration about, you know, from, from, you know, anything that I think, oh, that's cool. Like, that just makes me, like, gives me the, the motivation to train, right? Yeah. I think, like, a lot of times people ask me, like, oh, what, what's the most important thing about, uh, you know, martial training? Uh, I would say motivation. If you don't have the motivation, it doesn't matter that you have the best coach, the best teacher, the best equipment, the best technique that you can learn. If you're not motivated, you're not going to go train. Yeah. So motivation is important. Self-motivation is really important. So in my case, like, you know, it's super easy for me to just like watch a uh, video game. Like, oh, that looks cool. Uh, let me try to see if I can do it in sparring, you know, and, and go and train. Uh, read a comic book. Oh, this movement looks good. Obviously, you're not going to be like climbing walls and like, you know, you know, jumping at rooftops. But just like something that, that inspires you. Like, okay, that's pretty cool. Like, I I'm just going to train and get better and get stronger and get more agile. Um, so in the case of Batman, it's really cool because he's like this 
badass, respected, you know, mm. uh, character hanging around with superhuman beings. Mm. Mm. I like that. He's just a dude, right? He's just a guy that, yeah, has the, it, it's like a dark motivation, uh, mm. but it is a motivation. In, in, in that motivation, uh, you know, help him like reach like, you know, mm. high uh, ideals. Mm -hmm. physically mentally in in all aspects you know yeah. so you know and and then obviously there's that uh for this character it's uh always the the martial arts background you know within all his you know yeah. fighting abilities and his uh you know mental capabilities so yeah i, I think that's what attracts me the yeah. most about uh you know that character it's a great good answer well uh this wraps up my questions for today i i won't be surprised if you know sometime later i will reach out to you again uh but i just we should man yeah nice. we should definitely this this is always a a good interaction and and uh hmm. you know it's good to see you again talk to you like um hmm. uh it's been a while so definitely yeah. let's do this soon again yeah absolutely i i would be very happy to end and i also wanted to use the moment and use the chance and to say that uh i think it's I presume it's obvious, but I don't think I ever t said it to you directly that I really appreciate you, you know, being there for me through all of my journey. But there was also that specific moment of, you know, me just discovering uh, that whole confusion with my martial arts training. And you were one of the first persons uh, that can, I connected up with. And you really helped me kind of clarify and, and get the hang of so what's real what's not what i could do what i shouldn't do what i should do so that that helped really that your influence at, at that stage was a very important one so i wanted to use the chance and say thank you for you know being there for me at that period and it's always it's also great now to after some time passed to catch up again and reflect about those things so it's really cool thank you I'm happy that that you know I was able to to be of some help and and some little inspiration there. So nice. that's good, man. That's that's good. And 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 see this this is one of the few good things that social media and technology is uh, yeah. bringing about. Like you know we're thousands of miles apart, and I think we uh, we struck a good friendship. Like uh, yeah. and hopefully you know you can. I know like with this pandemic, like travel is hard, but you know, I, yeah. I, I hope that once things uh, resume to a, you know, normal level uh, and you visit uh, the States again, we can meet. Yeah, that's train great. Finally. Yeah, and now you're in California and California is one of my destinations. So I think it's 100% we'll, we'll meet as soon yes, as life gets back to normal. Let's, let's, let's punch each other in the face, man. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be great. Cool. And, 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 and still ending a harmonious level. And, yes. And, and that, yeah. that's, and I'm sure that's we, would, a, yeah, we would be the right people to I, do that. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's martial arts, you know, what's that about? Like, uh, like just, just let's go through, through uh, you know, harsh uh, physical interaction and still, uh, you know, find a, a harmonious resolution through that. So, but yeah. That's good, man. I, I'm glad that you know I was I was uh, able mm. to to put a little bit of a, of a good positive uh, you know note on on your journey on that. So, nice. thank you. Thank you. Well, good. I'll let you go to your family. I'm sure you know. I know myself how important it is to to be with family, especially over weekends. But thank you very much for finding time. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll connect again. We'll keep connecting. So it'll be cool. Thank we you. will. Have a good one, Rokas.